Find the general solution to the differential equation y double prime plus 4y equals 10 2t using variation of parameters. So as always, we need to first find our homogeneous solution in which we take yh, or the left-hand side, equal to 0. And we form our characteristic or auxiliary equation of this, where 1 prime is 1 power of r, and so on and so forth. So y double prime is r squared, and no prime is no r, but you keep the coefficients, so r squared plus 4 equals 0. And I'll be rushing through this a little bit since I already covered this in my previous videos. So r squared equals negative 4. Take the square root to find the root. And r equals 0 plus or minus 2i, where alpha h equals 0 and beta h equals 2. And that's it. So this means that our homogeneous solution, yh, equals e to the alpha t times c1 cosine beta t plus c2 sine of beta t. Plugging in what we have, that means over here, yh equals e to the 0t, so 1 times c1 cosine of beta t, 2t, plus c2 sine of beta t, 2t once more. And this is important because we will be taking what's being multiplied by c1 and c2, and call that function y1 and y2, because our particular solution is dependent on these two factors here. So what's new here for variation of parameters is that yp for y particular equals what we call v1 times y1 plus v2 times y2. And for a function like tan, you can't use method of undetermined coefficients. It gets way too complex. Honestly, for these types of problems, you'd want to use variation of parameters. Moving on, what we need to do is obviously find v1 and v2, since we already have y1 and y2. So I will be using the Ronskian approach. You could use the systems of equations approach, but in my opinion, that one sucks compared to this. So v1, therefore, equals negative integral of y2 times f of t over our Ronskian value, where we take f of t to be the right-hand side. Where did I get this formula? You gotta memorize it. That's it. So for v2, you do the same thing. This equals the positive integral of y1 times f of t over Ronskian once more. And honestly, that's it. All we have to do is find Ronskian and do this integral, and we're done. So for Ronskian, if you don't know from linear algebra, that is essentially the determinant of y1 and y2, for instance, and their derivatives, respectively. This is used to find linear independence of functions, but we can use this in differential equations to help us evaluate this problem. Obviously, determinant means that it would be y1, y2 prime, minus y1 prime, y2. Which means that we have to use our y1 equals cosine of 2t value, as well as y2 equals sine of 2t values, to find their derivatives. So y1 prime equals derivative of cosine 2t, that is negative 2 sine 2t. And for y2 prime, derivative of sine 2t is 2 cosine 2t. So now we take this Ronskian value, this will take a little bit of space, and we plug in all our values here. So y1 is cosine 2t, I'll remove the parentheses to shorten it, and y2 prime is 2 cosine 2t. Subtracting that by y1 prime, negative 2 sine 2t, times y2, sine 2t. You can tell that this turns into a future trig function where it's 2 cosine squared of 2t plus 2 sine squared of 2t. Do you see what this can turn into? We know that sine squared of any value x, for instance, plus cosine squared of x equals 1. So we can factor out the 2 to be sine squared plus cosine squared, which is just 1. Therefore, Ronskin equals 2. Now we can use that to plug that into our integral value to find constants v1 and v2. So let's find v1 first. This is where you need to use a little bit of your calc 2 skills. So the negative integral of y2, which we found to be sine 2t, times f of t, our right-hand function, 
10 of 2t. Over Ronskian, 2. So rearranging, we can take that negative 1 half outside and simply have it of sine 2t times, obviously we can't solve it like this, we need to break down tangent into sine of 2t over cosine of 2t dt. This can turn into negative 1 half integral of sine squared 2t over cosine of 2t. We can use a very similar identity that we just used down here, where we can take sine squared of 2t equal to 1 minus cosine squared of 2t and solve from there. So that's negative 1 half integral 1 minus cosine squared of 2t over cosine of 2t. And now we can break this fraction up into its two respective parts, 1 over cosine 2t minus cosine squared of 2t over cosine 2t, which equals negative 1 half integral of 1 over cosine of 2t. You know what, let me change that to secant of 2t for simplicity. And since we can use the integral addition rule, you can just break it down into two different ones, plus because of the double negative here, 1 half, integral of cosine squared 2t over cosine 2t. The power up here cancels with the denominator, so it just becomes cosine of 2t dt. So now v1 equals, and don't even bother trying to memorize the integral of secant because you have to multiply by secant plus 10, and that logic isn't really easy to follow, so just try to memorize it. So accounting for the fact that it is 2t, we have to put that as a denominator, and multiplying that by 1 half, that's negative 1 fourth times the following. ln, absolute value of secant of the 2t value, plus 10 of 2t. And that's it. The integral of cosine 2t, keeping into account the 1 half, is plus 1 fourth sine of 2t. That's it for v1. For v2, integral of y1, which we had as cosine 2t times f of t, 10 of 2t, over r on skin of 2 dt, and factoring out the 1 half and breaking down 10 2t once more, we have cosine 2t times sine of 2t over cosine of 2t, and fortunately for us, cosine cancels, so we're left with a normal integral of 1 half times sine of 2t dt. So v2 equals negative 1 fourth cosine of 2t. Now before we write our general solution, we still need to find the particular portion of that, where we said it was v1 y1 plus v2 y2. So v1 was negative 1 fourth ln absolute value of secant 2t plus 10 of 2t plus that 1 fourth sine of 2t. And this will be multiplied by y1, which we found to be cosine of 2t. Now we add that to v2 y2, where it's simply negative 1 fourth cosine of 2t times y2, which was sine of 2t. Now let's see if there's any way to simplify this. Obviously, we got to leave the ln alone. We can't do anything about that. However, you can see there are two sine and cosine terms combined with each other. This one says plus one fourth sine 2t cosine 2t, and this one says minus one fourth sine times cosine. So these can actually cancel and make our lives a little easier. So y particular only equals this initial portion. But don't forget to multiply that by cosine of 2t. Remember, it's not just these two, it's also this whole term. So negative one fourth cosine of 2t ln absolute value of secant 2t plus tan 2t. And that is our particular solution. And as you know, for y general, that equals y homogeneous plus y particular. So we just have enough room to write the total solution. Let's start with the homogeneous portion. c1 cosine of 2t plus c2 sine of 2t which was what I got from up here. And now we just add this whole thing. So instead of plus, we say minus one fourth cosine 
of 2t, ln absolute value of secant 2t plus tan of 2t. Closing the absolute value, I believe that is everything. These types of problems are known for having notoriously long solutions, but once you get into the rhythm of things, especially with the rest of the series coming after this, you should have no issues solving these types of problems. So I hope that helped. If it did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.